what's so hard about this. It's actually not the technology. Although, the, I mean, like Ben, we noticed a lot of that stuff. A lot of this technology exists. A lot of this can be done. You know what's really hard about this? Was this public relations? Or was it marketing? <coughs> Well, no, we were finding about customers. Maybe it was market intelligence and market research. Maybe that's what it was. And the problem with a lot of what we just went through is not that we can't do a lot of these things today. It's that we're not really organized to do it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's an agency or whether it's a client company, we're kind of the product of the silos that we've built for ourselves. And those specialties have been really useful over the years. That's why they grew up. And the problem is that the changes that the internet has brought to us of kind of breaking down those silos. They're kind of making those things not as useful as they were before because all the things we're looking at can be looked at from any of those perspectives. So we looked at how a marketer would think about this maybe. She's like, okay, what am I going to do? How can I change my marketing based on what I'm learning? But a market researcher would go through the same thing and have a different last step, where they would say, well, now what I have to do is I have to figure out whether these things are really valid. I need to find out whether this is happening in all the market segments or just some. I have to find out whether this is um, something that is really going to meet statistical significance or whether it just we're just seeing kind of a blow up here in the blogosphere. I mean, yeah, there's 50 people talking about it. Is that statistically significant or not? I really don't know. And so I need to find that out before I'm going to go and ring the clarion bells and say, oh, we've got something we got to do here. And if it was a PR person, they'd be trying to figure out how they can blunt the story. How can they get positive stuff out there? How can they maybe interact with these people and see if they can talk them into maybe feeling a little bit differently or explain a little bit more about their products so they can get maybe a different story as a follow-up. And all of these reactions are totally valid. They make a lot of sense. This is what any company ought to do when faced with all of these things. And the problem is that these tools are not typically in the hands of any of those people. The other problem is that sometimes in the really largest company, these people don't even know each other. They have nothing to do with each other. They are measured in totally different ways, and they don't have anything that causes them to work together on this kind of problem. It's the last thing that Dorothy would think of would be, maybe I should call the market research people, or maybe I should get a PR person involved. It's the last thing she'd think of. Her mindset was, well, what can I do about service contracts and warranties? So she's going to do the things that she's been trained to do and knows how to do. And so I think one of the things for us to think about, I think someone in the back was saying, you know, one of the things I make people focus on when they ask about measurements is business goals. I think that's the key. The key is for us to make this larger. The key is for us to look at this in more of a holistic way and look at it in such a way that we've got something that everybody can agree on is what we're aiming at. And once we're able to do that, it will become so clear to people that they can't do everything themselves. They can't do everything their old way. That they'll suddenly start to cooperate, not because they're nice people, or, but because they're scared. Because they know they can't do it themselves, so they naturally are going to seek help. And so I think that's what we need to do. That's what the challenge is of measurements. The challenge to me of measurements is to make life so uncomfortable for people doing it the old way, that they'll be forced to figure out how to do it the new way. Because the reason they're not doing it the new way is because it's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable to make these kinds of changes. If you've got it wired, and you know how to make your job work, and you can seem like a success, you have no incentive to change. Now, the people who are excited and they're ready to move on to the new thing, I got news for you, they're already there. They're already doing it. It's all the 70% of the rest of people that have to be dragged kicking and screaming along. That's where we are now, and that's what we have to do to help them. But we shouldn't do it in kind of a, a I mean, I think some of the things I've said can actually look like I'm sneering at them or looking down on them, but it's not true. What's really true is those are the average people. Those are the normal, everyday people. I am like that in many parts of what I do, just not this one. Right? So, but there's all sorts of other things where I don't feel like changing, I think I understand it, I don't feel like doing anything new, but not in this one. And so in this one I can feel all superior to all these other people because I get it and they don't. But the truth is 70% of my life I don't get the new thing either. And that's what we have to remember is that all these people are just like us. 
And we have to figure out how we're going to set measurements that cause them to want to do the things that they need to do. And I think that's what Katie's going to be talking about next. Right.